I wish I had the type of story that comes with a real shocking encounter. I wish I had a clever hook or some great reveal to build up to. That's the problem with my story, understand? Anytime I tell it, people seem to lose interest in the details. Details are all I've got. I don't have the body of the thing that terrorized my land ten years ago and I didn't see it up close. I only the effects it had on my land and my livestock. Those things I paid attention to very closely. They were my livelihood, and this thing came out to destroy them. What I found first, and this separates my experience from so many others, was what looked like a crop circle. The edge of my property is dominated by fields of tall grass. Maintenance out there isn't as consistent as it should be. I visited the field on this particular day and found a large pattern pressed flat in its center. It looked like a meteor had landed in the blade and the impact had blown them all down. That didn't explain the basket weave pattern in the tall grass, but the sighting wasn't enough to shake me from my routine. I figured it was a weather anomaly. Then the problems began. I had a calf go missing. They were signs of a struggle and I followed them across my property from the relative safety of my ATV. The trail led me back to the indentation upon my field. My calf had been dragged back to the crop circle and then just… vanished. That, as you can imagine, was enough to shake me from my routine. We would later find the animal's remains, emptied of anything that had once given it life. The adult cows started to show signs of anemia. They were getting lethargic. They seemed to be thinner by the day. My usual vet couldn't explain their condition. The weight loss was too rapid and there were too few symptoms beyond the lethargy to suggest that something viral was taking place. What we found instead of answers were three puncture wounds in a triangle pattern at the base of the cow's necks. The puncture marks were in the same place on every member of the herd. The corners of the triangles were equidistant in every case. Whatever it was biting or stabbing my livestock, it was doing so with a methodical consistency. I thought I was being sabotaged. It sounds ridiculous now, but I thought maybe it was a man behind my troubles. Nothing else made sense to me at the time. I couldn't fathom the scope of what I was dealing with. I couldn't imagine that something truly horrible had arrived on my land. If you learned that was true, would you even know where to begin? I sure didn't. I added electric barricades and camera systems, thinking they would be enough to deter any intruders from pushing too far into my land. It would certainly keep them away from the cows, or so I believed. When another one disappeared, this time one of the fully grown females, I knew I was dealing with something more than sabotage. There were no drag marks this time. There was no path my cow could have taken to escape, and the camera caught nothing. No intruders on the perimeter. Nothing. I turned them inward. What choice did I have? I pointed the security system into the farm instead of away from it. My only hope was that the invader we were dealing with was lurking somewhere on my property. That would explain why I didn't need to interact with the electric fence. At least if I could catch it on camera and identify it, I could solve the problem. I could save my way of life. What I saw was a creature materialize out of the air. Others who have seen the footage suggest that it was just concealed by the environment, but I know that can't be true. It wasn't there and then it was… something walking on four legs stepped out of the empty space in the air. One leg at a time it pulled itself forward. The monster was the size of a wolf, massive and certainly intimidating. I could see at once why my livestock didn't stand a chance against it. Its head was long like a canine's too. Its hair only grew in patches and its skin was blistered, like it had rolled around on hot embers and burned away the majority of its fur. I'd say it was a sick dog if it wasn't for what happened next. A long cylindrical tongue slid out of its maw. It must have stretched over a foot long. The barbed end of it snapped onto the back of my cow's neck. It crawled onto its shoulders like it was ready to take the animal for a drive. The cow itself seemed complacent, maybe lulled into obedience by whatever was dripping from the end of the creature's tongue. Looking at the footage, I couldn't help but think of a mosquito drinking from the skin on my forearms. Was that what I was seeing? 
Was this creature drinking my animals dry? As quickly as it had appeared, it soon vanished. This time, the cow disappeared with it, as if its image was blown away by the wind. This has been explained to me as a technical error. Maybe there's some truth to that. Maybe the creature moves in a way that the technology just couldn't pick up. I don't know. I invited a few of my friends out that night. We waited up with shotguns and rifles. They weren't going to let me be run into the ground by some monster, even if they didn't believe in it themselves. For whatever reason, the creature didn't come back. Maybe it sensed the danger. Maybe it was just full. If that's the case, what do I do when it gets hungry again? I'm about 50 years old and I live been living in California for about five years now. I always used to be a skeptic by nature. I was a firm believer of science and frankly just listening to someone tell a paranormal story was something I couldn't bear. Life is crazy though. You never know what can happen to you. I am not a skeptic anymore. In fact, the paranormal, supernatural, whatever you want to call it has taken over my life. There are some overwhelmingly powerful, mysterious, and dark forces in the world we live in. When I first moved down here to California, I went camping to get away from it all for a night and just be alone with nature. I was reading a self-help book at the time that told me I should take time to be alone with my thoughts. I didn't take the most virtuous path in my life, to be honest. But moving to California was my way of doing a 180 in my life and getting on the right track. I was listening to lectures, going on retreats, and reading every self-help book I could get my hands on. The first couple of days were beautiful. It was just me. I did some meditating, tai chi, yoga, and was beginning to shed my skin of the past. I had set up my tent in a clearing, surrounded by trees, and the nearest town was a few miles away. One night, I was sitting outside my tent and enjoying a book by the fire. All of a sudden I hear the sound of children laughing and playing in the woods nearby. Keep in mind, I wasn't planning on seeing another soul, so I made sure the location I chose was miles away from anybody else. The children started laughing and playing even louder and now I could hear the faint sound of children's music. It sounded like it was coming from a music box. It was strange and unnerving and I kept shouting, Hello! Hello! Finally, I got up to investigate and shown my flashlight in the direction of the noise. I didn't see anything, but the children's noises and the music started getting louder and louder. It was really starting to freak me out, and I went deeper into the woods to figure out what the hell was going on. For a while, I didn't see anything, but then the sounds and the music started coming from multiple directions. Then in the distance, I noticed a pair of strange glowing eyes staring back at me. They were yellowish-green and had an unnatural shine to them. They were glowing in a way that really irritated my eyes. I was in absolute shock and couldn't believe what was going on. The eyes were very high up, so I had no idea what kind of creature I could be dealing with. The sounds kept getting louder and louder to the point I was getting a headache. I had to confront whatever this thing was. I ran towards the eyes screaming and telling it to stop. The closer I got to the glowing eyes, the further into the woods they went. Then all of the sudden, the music and the children's laughter stopped and the eyes disappeared. I was now deep in the woods, completely alone, and was shining my flashlight in every direction trying to find whatever I was dealing with. Then I heard an awful low growl that sounded freaking demonic. This made me lose it. I took off back towards the tent. I grabbed my keys, left all my stuff, climbed in my truck and took off down the road. I saw the eyes glowing in the distance again, and when I turned my high beams on, I saw a creature, almost skeletal, on all fours with the most evil sneer on its face. It was the most demented thing I've ever seen in my life. Its back almost looked like it was broken in half and it was angled downwards. It was the most unnatural, creepiest, horrifying thing I've ever witnessed. It followed me with its glowing eyes as I sped past it, and I was in shock the whole way home. Over the next few days, I was unable to shake off the fear that had taken hold of me. 
I started experiencing nightmares and hearing strange noises in my home. I even saw the creature lurking outside my window. But when I went out to investigate, it was gone. I couldn't sleep, eat, or think straight. I was always on edge and scared that the creature would come for me. I obsessively researched paranormal entities online, and that's when I first discovered a creature called the Skinwalker. It perfectly matched what I was seeing, and it had the ability to shape shift and conjure up sounds to lure its prey. One night, as I was driving home from work, I saw the creature standing in the middle of the road. I swerved to avoid it, and I crashed my car into a tree. Thankfully, I wasn't seriously injured, but the incident left me shaking. After the car accident, I couldn't shake off the feeling that the skinwalker was following me wherever I went. I saw it lurking in the shadows on my way to work. I caught glimpses of it darting behind me in my rearview mirror while driving, and I even felt its presence in my closet when I was getting dressed in the morning. But the worst part was the dreams. Every night I dreamt of the skinwalker, taunting me and tormenting me with its presence. I would try to fight back, but my attempts were always futile. It would disappear, only to reappear again in the next dream, haunting me relentlessly. As the days went by, my panic grew stronger. I felt like I was losing my grip on reality. I couldn't focus at work, I couldn't sleep at night, and I couldn't shake off the feeling that the skinwalker was always lurking just out of sight. I tried everything to get rid of it. I smudged my house with sage, I visited a psychic, I went to a psychiatrist, and I even sought out a shaman for help, but nothing worked. The skinwalker remained a constant presence in my life, haunting me at every turn. In the end, I realized that I had to accept that I might never be able to get rid of the skinwalker. It had become a part of me, and I had to learn to live with it. But even as I came to this realization, the panic never truly left me, and I still catch myself glancing over my shoulder, always on the lookout for that eerie, otherworldly presence. Look! If it wasn't scientifically explainable, I wasn't interested. I never believed in monsters or any of that crap. I was a logical man with a rational mind. That all changed when I saw it. I was sitting on my porch in South Carolina enjoying a nice cold beer when I saw it with my own eyes. At first I thought it was a weird cloud formation, but as I looked closer, I realized it was something else entirely. I'm just an average guy with a wife and kids. I work a 9 to 5 job, and I'm not particularly interested in anything paranormal. I never gave it much thought until I saw this freaking thing. I tried to ignore it at first but it was too mesmerizing to look away. I stared at it for what felt like hours, trying to figure out what it was. In the sky was a gigantic creature that twisted and turned, its long slender body writhing around and snaking through the air. Its scales glinted brightly, and I could see its eyes from way down on the ground. To say the least, I was in shock. Its wings were huge and flapping around making a huge whooshing sound. The thing looked like it was on the hunt, searching for something. What it was, who knows, but I'm glad it wasn't me. After seeing the winged snake creature in the sky, I spent every waking moment researching what it could have been. I watched videos of UFO sightings, read articles about alien encounters, and even researched the possibility of dragons. But nothing quite matched the creature I saw. It wasn't until I stumbled upon accounts of sky serpents that I realized that's the only thing it could have been. As I dug deeper into sky serpent sightings, I found that many people had reported seeing similar creatures. I even found some recent sightings that had been reported in the same area where I saw the sky serpent. It made me wonder if there was something more to it. I found a group of people online who had also witnessed sky serpents and joined their online forum to share our stories and experiences. You gotta be careful online, man. Some of those people are nutbags. But these are good people. They were very helpful in providing me with more information and resources to better understand what I had seen. The whole me being a rational thinking person thing ceased once I had this experience. 
The truth is, we have no idea what other strange creatures and mysteries are out there that we know nothing about. Some of these people online tell stories of where the sky serpents attacked them, their loved ones, their livestock, etc. I only saw it from far away. I can't imagine a sky serpent trying to eat me. Talk about traumatizing. My heart truly goes out to people. We have no idea what some people go through and then have to go on through life as if nothing happened. My research showed me that sky serpents have been reported all throughout history. Some people even believe they could be related to ancient sea creatures like plesiosaurs or mosasaurs. Fascinating stuff. After researching extensively, I finally came to accept that what I saw could have only been a sky serpent. All other suspicions were gone. I swear on my children's lives that what I saw was a sky serpent. It was an experience that shook me to my core and left me questioning everything I thought I knew about the world. I couldn't believe that such a creature existed, but the evidence was overwhelming. I found reports of sky serpent sightings that dated back centuries. It seemed that people had been encountering these creatures for as long as humans had been walking the earth. Crazy stuff, man. After coming to terms with what I had seen, I decided to share my experience with others. I knew that there would be skeptics, but I also knew that there were people out there who had seen similar things and were looking for answers. Oh my God, looking back on my experience, I realize how small and insignificant I am in the grand scheme of things. There are still so many mysteries in the world that we have yet to uncover, and I am grateful to have had this experience that has opened my eyes to the possibility of the unknown. I cannot emphasize enough how much this experience has affected every aspect of my life and the way that I think. The image of that sky serpent is forever etched in my mind, and it is something that I will never forget and will look at as a changing point in my life. I'm a more well-rounded, open-minded, empathetic, and interesting person now. I hear how ridiculous people sound now when they say that there's no such thing as Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. How could you know? It has opened my eyes to the possibility that there are so many other strange and unexplained phenomena out there just waiting to be discovered. Who knows what else is out there in the great unknown, just beyond the reaches of our understanding. I am now constantly on the lookout for any signs of the unusual, and my curiosity has been piqued in a way that I never could have imagined. This experience has left me with a profound sense of wonder and excitement for what else may be out there, just waiting to be explored. My investigation into sky serpents led me down a path of discovery that I never could have imagined. I connected with people from all over the world who had had similar experiences, and I learned so much about the history of these creatures. The sky serpent sighting had a profound impact on me, and it made me realize that there is still so much to be explored and discovered in this world. 